When disaster strikes and communication systems fail, do you have a plan? Welcome back to the DX Engineering Channel. I'm Michael KI8R. In light of the recent devastation in the southeastern U.S. caused by Hurricane Milton and Helene, which wreaked havoc across Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and the Carolinas, more and more people are seeking ways to prepare for emergencies. In the wake of these storms, much, and in some cases, all the infrastructure was destroyed, leaving millions without power, water, internet, cell phones, or any means of communication to get help. The N2GE Mount Mitchell 14519 repeater has played a pivotal role in coordinating with services to deliver food, water, and other essential supplies to those in dire need. As of this recording, this net rec continues to provide vital communications, this repeater has a huge footprint covering parts of five states. And while not all of us live in an area that's typically affected by a hurricane, fires, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, and other natural disasters can and do occur. The most recent hurricanes are a powerful reminder that it is important to have an action plan in the event of an emergency. In this series of videos, we'll explore various ways to prepare, but today, I want to take a broader perspective to help you give some things to think about for your situation. So what do you need to do to be prepared in the event of an emergency? First, if you don't already have a ham radio license, consider getting one. Disasters like the recent hurricanes have demonstrated that ham radio is essential for getting information in and out of an affected area when conventional communication systems fail. And while there are other services available like GMRS and MERS, their range is limited. POC radios or push to talk over cellular only work if you have access to a cell network. Cell networks have proven time and again just how fragile they really are. Anyone remember the AT&T outage of February 2024? Also, if you look at a coverage map, there are still numerous gaps, particularly in the western third of the US. During a disaster, cell networks are prone to failure. And you might be thinking, well, my iPhone can send a text message through a satellite. And while this is true, if you have a recent version of the iPhone and are running the latest version of iOS, you still need to have a clear view of the sky for this to work. Also, in the event of an emergency, will you know who to send a text message to to get assistance? And while Part 97403 does allow for anyone who isn't licensed to use a radio during an emergency, if you're unfamiliar with the radio that you have, how are you going to be able to talk to anyone? Someone who isn't licensed will find it very difficult to do things like programmer frequency or PL tone to access a repeater. They'll likely not know how propagation works on HF or what band to use during what given time of the day. Then there's knowing how to set up an antenna. These are skills that you need to learn and practice before you need them. Otherwise, you'll find yourself with a radio that you don't know how to use. The bottom line here is practice, practice, practice. With all that said, the first question you need to think about is this. Who do I want to talk to? Who you want to talk to and where they're located will impact your decision about what kind of radio you want to use. If staying in touch with your neighbors or a nearby family member is most important, then GMRS or FRS may be all you need. For those who are a bit further away, a VHF or UHF ham radio may be what you want. But for those who are hundreds or thousands of miles away, HF radio will be necessary. What information do you want to know? If you're in an affected area of a disaster, you'll want to know things like road conditions, store closings where food, water, and fuel are available, and you may need to know things about traffic conditions or damage reports. If power is out, how will I power all my devices? Some radios can charge through a charging cradle that requires 12 volts, while others like the Kenwood THD75A or the new ICOM ID52A Plus can charge through USB-C. Lithium batteries have made significant advancements offering a lightweight, long-lasting solution to keep your devices operational. And when paired with a solar panel and a solar charge controller, can last almost indefinitely, making it easy to keep your 12-volt devices charged or powered. Consider a mix of tools. 
you might want to consider having a GMRS, FMR, FRS radio, as well as VHF, UHF radios, and maybe even an HF rig. Remember that most dual band radios can monitor at MERS and FRS GMRS frequencies as well. Another thing to consider is a portable AM FM radio, preferably one that's powered by a hand crank. This is an excellent way to stay informed about what's going on around you from local and regional news sources. What are some activities that you can do to test your preparedness? Operating parks on the air, summits on the air, or field day are fantastic opportunities to get your radios out in the field. These activities not only enhance your skills in setting up your station and antennas in an off-grid environment, but also provide valuable hands-on experience. Also consider training with the National Weather Service for storm spotting, especially if you live in an area that is prone to having severe storms and tornadoes. Also check out your local ARES and RACES groups. Here are some things to remember. Ham radio is reliable in that it can operate independently of any commercial infrastructure. Many hams practice for emergencies. Groups like ARES and RACES work together with local emergency management agencies to provide critical support during and after disasters by relaying messages, coordinating logistics, and assisting with search and rescue operations. The devastation left in the wake of the hurricanes is tragic, but it is also a reminder that we can't take our modern conveniences for granted. Now is the time to get prepared. Getting your ham radio license may save your life or the life of someone else someday. Don't wait until the next event happens to realize just how essential these systems are. The best time to prepare is now. Thanks for watching. I'm Michael, KI8R. We'll catch you on the next one.